Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And talking about your favorite and most cherished piece of memorabilia, we were just talking about that. We moved over to Facebook. Please go there and put it on there because we can talk about this for days probably. But one just came in that might be ridiculous. I have to read this one from Megan checking in from the region from Northwest Indiana. She said, I had one of Michael Jackson's gloves in a case that my grandfather got out of an estate sale. Years later, I found out my mom gave it to Goodwill. (laughs) What? (laughs) I think that would be worth a million dollars. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, don't, I, I know it would be worth not talking to my mom ever again if she did that. Really? I mean, if it's real. Maybe it was from an estate sale maybe, to begin with. Maybe it was, you know, well, a replica. What if it was Michael Jackson's estate? Yeah. <laughs> Good, point. Good point. I would have to say the glove is real, sir. If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> That's oh. a different thing. Oh. <laughs> Could they take the glove to Michael? Was he cremated or buried? Michael Jackson. That's a great question. What Don't happened know. to Michael Jackson's body? Because they take the glove and then take it, and where is he buried? And then try it on him. You know, exhume the body and try it on to make sure it fit. <laughs> if the glove fits, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. Yes. So he was buried in a 14 karat gold casket. Wow. And was he buried in Graceland? I No. Well, he married... Lisa Marie, yeah, who sadly passed away last yeah. year. I don't think he's buried there. I mean, I don't... Yeah, Elvis is there, right? I think there's a mystery as to where Michael Jackson's body is. I'm quickly <laughs> scrolling this article. Do we uncover this now? But I don't think people know where he's at. But usually the Wikipedia... Wikipedia might just say he's interned at, like, you know, Gary, Indiana. Yeah, I don't think Wikipedia Wikipedia doesn't know. And also, Michael <laughs> Jackson, with all due respect to our friends at Gary, is not buried in Gary. He should be. I agree. I wish he would pay respect to Gary or would have paid his respect to Gary. Do you know how Gary. many times I drive past Gary on the toll road? My parents used to live in Ohio, and mm-hmm. I would go take the road there. I would have stopped every time if they had a 24-karat gold coffin, like, standing up outside the ground oh like a statue, <laughs> kind of like Han Solo and the Carbonite. I would have stopped every time to pay my respects. That actually sounds terrifying because it's Michael Jackson. Yeah. I don't want a 24-karat Michael Jackson coffin staring down at me. Apparently, I, he's he's in California at Forest Lawn by Walt Disney. Oh. He's buried. Oh, boy. That's yeah. disappointing. <laughs> I wish, I wish we didn't know where he was. <laughs> yeah. Also, why did he say he wanted to be buried by Walt Disney? I don't know. Well, I mean, he lived in a playground. Remember? <laughs> it was like a... It was a... <laughs> All right. So, allegedly... With a monkey, right? Wasn't yeah. there a... Yeah. Well, well, the monkey named Bubbles. Yes. Well, there was a monkey, and then wasn't there Macaulay Culkin? I, look, there's a lot of things going on in Michael Jackson's house I did not like. Oh, I do not stand by that. Either way, let's start a petition to get him moved to Gary. That'd be nice. I, I want Michael Jackson and Gary. Can you imagine a cross-country police escort with just Michael Jackson's casket? Do you know how many people would line up for that? It would be like to come full circle. It would be like the OJ chase when people got on the highway to see the Bronco drive by. It'd be like that? It'd, yeah. be, it'd be like the Cubs parade? Oh, my God. <laughs> this would be a great tourist initiative for Gary. Their their government should be Gary on could this. use it, too. Yeah. That'd be nice. That's what I'm saying. I I, I race past Gary. I, I, I I'm, but I'm, Okay, that's mean. No, I'm just that's, saying. That's very mean. But I have no reason to stop there right. when I'm making that ride back to Ohio. But if I saw Michael Jackson, like, over, like they put him on the highway, like over the highway. <laughs> what, like he's mistletoe? Like, like, welcome to Gary, Indiana. That's... Okay, I got a lot of ideas here. Okay, okay. here's what we do. Take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm so excited. So we build, like, an oasis over the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a Sabaro. We put a Sabaro in there. Nice. <laughs> and Michael Jackson. <laughs> I can't breathe. Oh, my God. 
Who can help me work on this? <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Well, we just went off into a tangent <laughs> that was totally ridiculous. As we were talking about your most prized possession, you know, memorabilia, what do you cherish? And a woman said that her grandfather had a Michael Jackson glove and her mom gave it to Goodwill. And then Kara brought up a great point. Well, how do you verify it was his? I said, well, hey, go to the coffin, exhume the body, and if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> and then it's not Michael Jackson's real glove. And I'm, then, I, then I got really just angry that he's not buried in Gary to help the city of Gary out. It's a tourist attraction. That's yeah. where he's from, of course. They have, I don't they have a museum there. And the house, I believe, his first house is a historical site. But Michael Jackson should be on an oasis over the tollway, hanging from a Sabaro by a chain <laughs> above the highway. <laughs> So everybody can see it. Like it's the 24 karat gold coffin. That's all I'm saying. Now, Kyle checked in and said, if it was Chicago, it would take at least 10 years for that oasis to be built. But the Sabaro and Michael Jackson tribute would be completely worth the traffic. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> for 10 years of traffic. Can you imagine the buzz in the city while that was getting built? Just waiting for opening day. I mean, they're already doing it on the Kennedy anyway. What's one more thing? Exactly. Just add right. it. That's just for fixing the concrete. Yeah. This would be adding Michael Jackson hanging from yeah, something the oasis. something worthwhile. I laughed so hard, I, I think I hurt my kidney. <laughs> I, I apologize about that. Oh, but I, my God. We could do a live broadcast from there the day it would open up if they would just do it. Oh, yeah. And all the money goes to pay off, like, the debts in northwest Indiana. It would be for a good cause. Yeah, so I, yeah I don't want money going to the family. I'm not getting family. richer from this. You're not getting richer from this. No, I don't want anybody in the family getting it. I want the state or yes. northwest Indiana getting the money for we the attraction. We love the region. Oh, I love the region so much. I know. So... Kasten said, well, what's, what's, or no, a texter asked about yeah, Bubbles. To, to, Tony from the region, from Northwest Indiana, he asked, well, what happened to Bubbles the chimpanzee? Yeah. Because Bubbles was Michael Jackson's pet chimp. Sure. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I got to put a monkey wrench in there. See that? Fitting tribute. You got that one? Yeah. You very, very well done. Even you get the it? monkeys so and chimps are different. There, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to the Bubbles Wikipedia page, which does exist. Okay. In 2009, after Michael Jackson died, one of Jackson's handlers was quoted as saying, Bubbles definitely missed Jackson when they parted and will miss him now. Aww. Chimpanzees are very intelligent. They remember people and stuff. Aww. Bubbles said, uh, Bubbles and Michael were close friends and playmates. And the last time Michael visited him, Bubbles definitely recognized and remembered him. Jackson's press mm. agent went on to tell reporters when Bubbles heard about Jackson's demise, he, quote, went bananas. <laughs> <laughs> but like Mark Twain, mm. stories about Bubbles' death have been grossly exaggerated, and at least according to this interview, Bubbles is alive and doing well. Well, what would he be, like 40? I think he'd be older than that. He might even be 50, but I don't know how long chimpanzees live. Just did he, Googling. Did he have Bubbles in the 80s? He did. Oh, so he could be like, he could be like 50. Uh, <laughs> it says 39 <laughs> for female and 32 for boys. So say, I would, say it again, Kara. 30, the average age for a chimp is 39 for a female, 32 for a male. The average lifespan. Yes. Well, yeah. well, well let's do this math. So Bubbles was born in 1983. So 93, 03, 13. Bubbles would be 40 years old 41, this year. 41, 41. Yeah. Was Bubbles a girl or a boy? Bubbles was a boy. Okay. Just right you know, around the cusp. It was, it was Michael Jackson's chimpanzee. Bubbles was a boy. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And Kara Carib was in here filling in for Kenzie on maternity leave. So I don't know if you've ever gotten to do this with us or not, head to headlines. I don't think so. Because you've been here another week before. This yeah. is fun. So we basically take two headlines that we're really interested in and talking about the stories. Head to headlines is the listeners, that's what you do. You choose the content. You choose which story we break down and talk about by texting in headline number one or text in headline number two. Just those words based on the headlines we're gonna give you. The kicker is we'll never talk about the other story again that you don't choose. Oh. I know. Kind of a bummer, right? Yeah. Kara's upset about this I bit. I am. Kara doesn't like this I bit. I like everybody to win. Every, all stories to be told. Well, you got to choose one. That's what it does. It puts right. you in a corner. I love it. So here we go. And these are uh, the first one I got to say is a doozy. Here's headline number one. David Bowie tribute band singer arrested for his role in January 6th oh. <laughs> attack on the Capitol. 
<laughs> I don't remember seeing that guy with the star eye. Like. <laughs> uh, apparently he was there. So that's headline number one. If you want to hear more about that story, text in headline number one. But not before you hear headline number two, which is New York Times fires disability accessibility manager for managing disability accessibility. <laughs> Now, if you want to hear more on that story, text in headline number two. Tough choices today. Yeah. Found both, Those are both very intriguing headlines. I found headline number two, and Case found headline number one. He's been holding on to it for weeks. Well, I just, I found it so interesting that a Bowie impersonator was at the insurrection. <laughs> Will you read those headlines one more time? Okay, so once again, headline number one. David Bowie tribute band singer arrested for his role in the January 6th attacks on the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> so flippantly uh, like of course like of course he did <laughs> yeah. uh headline number two new york times fires disability accessibility manager for managing disability accessibility <laughs> <laughs> so you choose right now at 312-591-8300 text and headline number one or headline number two we'll talk about it after foo fighters whichever one you choose it's your show it's q101 the brian and kenzie show on Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Coming up at 9, we have Burt Kreischer tickets. The machine at the United Center. So that's right at 9. And in the 9 o'clock hour, we'll have more tickets to Cage the Elephant with Ticket Butch Thursday. Continuing at about 9.20, we'll have those. So every hour, as we promised. So here we go. It is Head to Headlines right now with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And boy, this one is polarizing. This one really is a pretty even race here. On the text line at 312-591-8300. You pick the content we talk about and break down. There's two headlines. You pick one and we talk about that story. The other one we'll never talk about again. Headline number one was David Bowie tribute band singer arrested for his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. (laughs) Case has been holding on to this headline for weeks. I was just so surprised that a Bowie singer would be there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Bowie'd be into that. I mean, we, no, can't, I mean, we, we can't ask him. He's sadly oh, gone God, too I, soon. If only I could resurrect David Bowie just to ask him what his thoughts on January 6th were. It's a weird hour. We're trying to move Michael Jackson from California <laughs> to Gary. And then we talked about Hotel California lyrics. And now David Bowie. If this is so, your first time listening, we're good people. We promise. <laughs> well, this, show, this show's taking a weird direction today. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so that's headline number one if you want to hear more on that. The next headline, headline number two was... New York Times fires disability accessibility manager for managing disability accessibility. (laughs) Now, this really was split down. We've got about six or 700 texts here. It's split right down the middle. It's only a couple texts that tell you the difference of which story you want to hear. We'll never talk about the other story again. And the winner is... Sorry, I'm building it up a little bit. <laughs> I thought maybe you just forgot you forgot what you were going to say. Uh, headline number one is the winner. Oh. David, David Bowie tribute band singer arrested for his role in the January 6th attack. So uh, let's dive into that story right now. First off, should we play a little bit of his band? Of course. So the band is called American Bowie Experience. This is the guy, the singer that was arrested uh, for the situation. Song Young Americans by David Bowie. Oh, wow, he's good. I know, I was kind of hoping he was going to be way worse. (laughs) Okay, well, wow, he's pretty good. Yeah. And that was House of Blues, too. That's not a bad house for a cover band. Yeah, they actually played a big houses, and the band looks pretty good. I mean, it's not like something in a small dive bar. Like, they're pretty legit. That sucks. But they're they're done now because he's been arrested. At least for a while, they got to take a pause. Imagine that comeback tour, though. So, <laughs> well, we'll see how long it is according to the story. Maybe he's going to jail or what. So here's, his, here's the story. Steve Baker, he's a conservative journalist who also sings in the David Bowie tribute band, The American Bowie Experience, has been arrested and charged for his role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Aww. Just very odd that, 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 that he's in a Bowie tribute band. Everybody's got their own thing. It's yeah. funny. He, he goes home from work. As a conservative journalist, he's like, all right, time to put on the makeup. I got to be Bowie yeah, tonight. right. I got three gigs this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah every, every, you don't know what everyone, you don't know what, you know, book by the cover thing we like to say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Baker is facing four misdemeanor charges, according to NBC News. He turned himself in to federal authorities in Texas on Friday. So he took himself there. Um, according to the FBI affidavit, 
Baker spent 37 minutes inside the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. 37 minutes. Yeah. It went on for a while. I mean, I remember hours. Yes, it felt I like. was watching it. Yeah. I, I, I would also agree. I think it went on for a while. Yeah. I think I went home from the show and it started. I took a nap, if mm-hmm. I remember. I said, like, oh, that's just some people out front. And then when I woke up, they were showing the people climbing on the walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said to Megan, my wife, I'm what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> They're still letting these people do all this stuff? Where's the Where's the National Guard? Where, where is everybody to stop? There? It's the Capitol. You can't do that. It's one of the oddest days. Yeah. Because you just watch it, just like you said, it's like, Oh, I guess they're just doing this. I guess they're just. I guess we're just letting it happen. I guess it's just going to happen. You know, you can be any. You can. That's what's great about this country is you can do what you want, but you can't do that. Not in the capital, sir. I don't care what side of the of the aisle you're on. No, it's no, a political show. Yeah, no one should be able to climb up on the capital. <laughs> right, right. I mean, if this was back in like the 1700s, like George Washington would have said, like, "We'll just shoot them all." <laughs> I, I, I mean. That's what he would have said. And luckily, we've evolved. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Want, I didn't want that, but I mean, you can't just go where you want. I agree. I can't. I'm trying to think of some place in Chicago I can't just go up. Like most places, I can't climb the top of the Bean. No, although God, I'd love to see that because the Bean is slippery. Oh, it's so <laughs> slippery. What you would you ride the Bean like a mechanical bull? What yes. would you do when you got up there? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's Brian doing his, uh, his, his cowboy dance. Doing on his thing. Doing his, he's riding the bull. He's a crazy man up there on the Bean. Okay, so he spent 37 minutes inside the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, including at one point he got into then Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's office. There was one dude that got, they showed his, put, put his feet up in there. Yeah. But it was, that's not him. That's a bummer. Yeah, he just kind of walked in and we're like, huh, I like her curtains. Yeah, no, she, I like what she did with the place. <laughs> Maybe we could use those for the next set for a bowling concert. <laughs> um, as evidence, the affidavit point to surveillance, surveillance footage from inside the Capitol, as well as Baker's own cell phone footage. Took some video. He wasn't wearing, like, the Bowie face, was he? He was not. Okay. As far, well, I don't have those pictures, so yeah. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe it was the Bowie eye makeup, but it was camo because he didn't want to be seen by everybody. He did, like, a <laughs> militaristic version of it. I'd love to see what he was wearing there as opposed to what he's wearing on stage at the House of Blues. Yeah. Um, so the cell phone footage and comments he made act afterwards. So he has his own podcast, apparently. <laughs> so he didn't hide it at all when right. he did. Well, it's kind of putting a target on your back a little bit. Um more than 1,300 people have been arrested, it says, for the participation in the attack, with more than 900 being convicted. And among them also, he's not alone in the music business of going in. Uh, John Schaefer, the guitarist of the metal band Iced Earth, also pleaded guilty, and he's uh, got three to four years in prison. Oh, wow. Now, he's got four to three to four misdemeanor. I don't think he's going to prison. I don't. You know what I mean? This guy from the Bowie tribute band? I'm not sure. That's where the story ends, so we don't know it. We'll, we'll follow it and let you know what happened to him. Uh, their band's pretty good. I mean, if you yeah. like Bowie. So, so if you can sing Bowie, there might be an opening. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, if you like Bowie, I mean. Well, we'll keep you posted. And there's head to headlines <laughs> with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and we have Burt Kreischer tickets coming up. I'm going to play My Chemical Romance in just a second here, but we're going to, after that, give away tickets for Burt Kreischer, one of the funniest dudes alive, tops off world tour at the United Center. Now, before we get there, let's talk about St. Patty's Day. Now, next Friday is not exactly St. Patty's Day, but it's Chicago, so we can do what we want. It's the Ides of March. That's right. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. March yeah. well, 15th. Hmm. Julius Ides Caesar. Of, what did he do? I don't know, but so, get, so, didn't somebody stab somebody? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he was a big salad guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, we, I, this might be another tangent, but are Caesar salads from Julius Caesar? Well, I don't know. Is this the real Caesar's Palace? I'm not getting a signal on my beeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, where you should be is none of those places, but Lizzie McNeil's next Friday, 6 to 10 a.m., broadcasting live for the third year in a row. It's our spot. It's right downtown and on the river and right near Navy Pier in that area. If that helps you out, if you're coming in from the burbs, just put it in your phone. Q101.com has the address. And it is a spot where everybody in the city at one point stops through St. Yeah. Patty's Day weekend. So fun. Yeah. And we'll be giving away tickets about every 15 minutes for concerts. Big shows, Case? Huge shows. Sold out LCD sound system tickets. Burt Kreischer tickets. Oh, Burt tickets, too. Cage the Elephant. Creed and Three Doors Down. 
Vampire Weekend, Limp Biscuit. Oh. Sold out Noah Khan Alpine Valley tickets. Wow, we got those? I know. Are, so, th are those the ones you bought? Those are the ones I bought. We're giving away those? I, well, not the one. You, you can sit next to me, maybe. Okay. <laughs> That'd be great. Bridget calls me Baby Dave Matthews Band. So much more ticket giveaways every 15 minutes. If you show up and hang out with us, you will likely leave with something cool other than just a memory. Wow. That's a lot. Plus, you get there early, right at 6. Make sure you're there when the door's open. We'll have breakfast for everybody. And, you know, that's while it lasts. Yes, that's right. Because they, it went, I didn't get breakfast last year. I didn't either. Yeah. And it was all laid out there. And it, it was a generous, you know, generous stuff for all our people there. Yum. Maybe we'll get some Irish dancers or bagpipers. If you do something interesting, hit us up at 312-591-8200. If, if you can do something. I'd love if one of our listeners plays bagpipes. I actually know somebody who plays bagpipes. Is that right? Yep. And, uh, I could talk to him. I mean, they're probably available Friday because it's not, you know, Sunday when the yeah, parade is Saturday. Yeah. He played on my birthday in my house. I purposely threw a party <laughs> somewhere else not to bother my neighbors. And then there's this guy at 2 in the morning playing happy birthday on the bagpipes. Is he good? Yeah. The question is, do you know if they're good? Yeah. It's That's bag true. I couldn't tell a bad bagpipe player from a good one. True. <laughs> now, we will have some music there as well. We already got the vaccines booked. They'll be with us. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.